In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the rise of socialism and the rise of communism in the late 19th and the early 20th century. When we ended our discussion of World War One, I, I explained how the horrors of World War One and a recognition of the horrors of World War One cast doubt on the promises that the Enlightenment had held out to Western Europe and Western civilization. The promise that if the principles of the Enlightenment were followed, that society would become ever more just uh, and ever more equal. World War One seems to suggest that that's not happening. And uh, so we're going to find that a significant number of people in Western Europe and in Western civilization and increasingly across the world are going to turn towards new ideologies that they hope will provide them with this more equal society. And what we find that's pretty common across these movements is a confidence in the state. A turning towards the state, uh, a willingness to grant more economic and social power to the state in order to create this more equal society. And this, loosely speaking, is how I'm defining socialism. And so I want to begin by talking about Karl Marx. Marx is a member of the middle class from Germany who is particularly struck by the poor conditions in which workers uh, spend most of their days, in which uh, workers labor as part of the Industrial Revolution. He's particularly struck by the poor conditions of industrial labor. And this concern for the poor conditions of workers in industry, along with his reading of the German philosopher Hegel, are the main influences behind Marx's view of history. Marx is going to see history as determined by class conflict. The change in history happens through conflict, and the conflict is driven through the differences between uh, people's classes, between people's economic backgrounds. What does this mean? This means that uh, economic motivations are the main driver of historical change, historical and social change. Marx claims that anything else, uh, religious uh, connections, family or social uh, connections or priorities, these are just really veneers. And underneath, everything is driven by economic motivations. And second, that these motivations are determined. This is a very deterministic approach to history. It emphasizes the ways in which people are determined rather than the agency of individuals. So it's not as though uh, individual people are convinced by different ideas. What Marx is suggesting is that history is driven by conflict based on class. And so the class that people fall into determines their political views. So this is how Marx sees history, as predetermined, as driven by class conflict. And when Marx looks at history, he believes that he sees patterns that support his theory. And so he looks at the period before the Industrial Revolution and he says you had class conflict between these feudal nobles and between merchants who were more enlightened. And the Industrial Revolution made it possible for the merchants, for the businessmen, for the middle class that Marx uh, calls the bourgeoisie, enabled them to take control of society from the nobles. And the old feudal nobility are increasingly marginalized. And now, Marx says, we live in that society created by the bourgeoisie, created by the middle class, in which the middle class, because of their class, oppress the working class. And this is what he says he sees in factories. And so he calls for the working class to rise up, to bring about a revolution that will in turn marginalize the middle class and put the working class in control. Then he claims that for communism to be implemented, the idea of everything being held in common, everyone having equal possessions, there needs to be a strong state, a state which controls all the social and economic aspects of life, and that this state can then divide up the wealth of society equally and create a society that's totally fair and totally equal. 
So this is the theory of Marxism. I'm going to provide another couple of videos talking about early efforts to implement Marxism.